size. Um, there it is, the step size or distance uh, that you have to travel before another dab goes in. So you have now some stars you can add here, very sparse, very few of those. And okay, that's enough uh, time wasted on the star field. Let's go and and keep that. So that's our background image, and then we want to have this uh, as a foreground on top of it. So there's a couple of ways to do that. One is you work with the two image buffers. Right? There's a main image that's currently in here. You can see up at the top here says main. We're looking at the main buffer. And then there is the backside of it, the swap buffer, the swap image. It's sort of the backside of the canvas. You can switch to it here. There is a, a jump to the swap image. And that one still contains a, uh, a texture map that we used in the 3D designer um, where we created this elevation map, but we also had the color map for the texturing or texture map for the coloring if you want to go that way. So let's let's go store that one just in case we want to get back to it. But here is basically a clear background image in the swap, and here is the main image. So what we could do is load the other image in here, such as this one, um, and that only puts the red, green, blue channels in there. Um, but because we have a unique green background color, that might actually be enough to do some sort of compositing. Um, let's let's have a look. So um, I don't know if I need to do it this way or look from this way. Well, we'll we'll try it either way. So let's go under filter, uh, combine with swap, or composite with swap. Right, composite with swap, green screen. Uh, that will do a fairly nice job already. Right, so how did we start? We started with looking at one image in the background. That's the background image. It doesn't matter if we are looking at swap or main. We're going to switch to the other one and put this image in there. And then uh, no selection mask needed, simply using the, um, the composite with swap as, and using the green screen. And sometimes you're not exactly on cue. Sometimes you're not exactly at the right level of green. So you, you can adjust a little bit. Uh, the, the clip here, um, for instance, if you have some green, some vegetation on your landscape as well, you, you do want to make sure that that stays opaque as much as possible. All right, so that's one technique that's going to work in many cases. Um, and there are a lot of parameters to adjust here. Plus, you can apply that across the entire frame sequence of your animation, of your video, right, if you have a, a sequence like that. All right, and the animation could be in the background sky. You might have a supernova explosion there and some massive clouds, uh, plasma uh, clouds expanding or something like that. Um, all right, so that's one of the composition techniques. Another technique would be, uh, actually, you can see the same. Uh, what I did is I used the filter and did composite. Another technique is if you go to the sidebar, um, in the sidebar, there is a preview at the top, the media. All right, let's go and, uh, yeah, here's the media. Uh, the media preview is essentially, let me see if I can minimize some of these here. Yeah, so the media preview is essentially giving you at the top here the brush image that you currently have. There is a, um, a paper texture, and it's disabled, but if I click it, you see a little orange triangle indicating that paper is on. And you see that here as well in the title uh, at the top of the window. We're looking at the swap and we're looking at paper is enabled. That's used when you paint with a brush. Uh, now there's another mode here, which is the uh, combining of the two. So this is a, a sort of a layer mixing, uh, but just between the main and the swap image. So whatever image you have back there, it's uh, going to combine this way. And so um, what you can do is right click on that and change the layer mode. Now you don't see any effect there if you do that unless you enable by clicking it, right? So now it's activated. And the trick here is to find the right mode. And if we have a background color that's green, maybe green screen is going to help us with that, all right? All right, so that's one technique. Um, <clears throat> we can also do that with uh, the layers all together. So you can go into, let's see, where are the layers? Right here, uh, we have just one image in this layer, right? But instead of loading the other image, that background sky, into the swap, we could put it into a layer here. All right, so let's do that. Let's first of all, let's really sh get rid of this one so we, we know we're not looking at this one when we see the composition between the layers. Let's go and clear that. And it's all white. And now, uh, that's the swap image. Let's go back to the main. 
or oh, actually this one is a swap, it doesn't matter. We have, we're just looking at one at this time and we're gonna add another layer. Where is it? Down here at the bottom. Um, let's go add another layer. And this layer is gonna receive a copy of the stored image here. Just click it and that will load it in here. Now the default layer mode is a multiply, right? So what we need to do is see if we can help it. And that's a nice thing now, in, since version 11.3, uh, you have a real time or like sort of an immediate switching uh, option here. Now you would think when you do green screen, it should show it should show the the landscape or pig, but it depends on which one is on top, right? So you really don't want to green screen on this layer. That's the one that has the background. So that one we probably just keep it default or don't don't worry about it. But what we need to do is raise this one to the higher level and then make that one the green screen. All right. So let's move this one up. Now we have. A green screen uh, it's actually I'm not sure if oh yeah it's already in green screen mode there you go so you could change that and as you change it you see what effects you get some of these might be interesting too all right but uh, for the most part let's see oh this one's nice intense green uh, background uh, but typically what you're looking for is something like this one all right we still have a little bit of a reddish tint on the landscape remember we did that with the second light source in 3d designer to make it look like we have a nearby red giant. And uh, we need to have a little bit of a bright spot over here. But before we do that, we can decide whether we want to put that in a separate layer or just flatten these two layers first, right? So, I mean, you, you have one layer, you have another layer, and you can flatten that right here. Or you can also adjust the level of opacity of any of these layers, right? Right now here is 255 is the maximum for an 8-bit value but you could give it sort of a, a, a ghost uh, appearance, like a dream or something. And uh, so that's this part. And uh, let's, let's in fact add one more layer and that layer goes on top. And what we do, make sure you select it because you know you always have one particular selected layer that you work on. So this one here on top right now is in multiply mode, which is when I turn it off, it doesn't show any change right? by default. The default layer is in multiply mode, uh, and if it's white, then you don't really see any difference. Um, so between multiply and default, no difference either. But what I want to do is have it um, perhaps produce something like a, an additive mode, All right? and then add the, let's see, additive, and then erase it to dark, right click to erase to black. So now that layer is all black, and there is nothing showing from that layer, but I could go and paint something in there. For instance, with the gradient collections, there's a Nova, and I could put the bright star right around here, and it'll be in additive mode, so it will it will shine pretty bright, and that will allow me to get something that's kind of in sync with the lighting. I see the shading, the shadows. Uh, another option perhaps would be to actually um, uh, use the, the lens flares. That's uh, probably one of my favorites there. Uh, let's go and take one of those and put it right around here. There you go. All right. Maybe it's a little bit too bright or too high. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, there's a sun looking like. There you go. Okay. That's a little bit nicer. Uh, perhaps you'd like to add some of these uh, lens reflection circles. There you go. And if it's there but it's too intense, what you can do is use the interactive undo. Don't forget that fade last action or interactive undo uh, you have that also under the filter right here fade last action so that's the same thing as interactive undo except you go in the opposite direction uh, for the slider from zero to one or from one to zero right <laughs> uh, all right so that's that's how to combine all these in separate layers um, this one here is using the alpha channel excuse me not the alpha the green channel the green screen mode uh, this one here is additive, this one here is green screen, and this one is just plain there, you see. And you can turn that off if you don't want to, and then you see sort of a transparency plaid pattern in the background. All right, so that's yet another technique, and there is more. Let's see. Let's go back to, I'm going to flatten all this, um, one image to, um, to win them all. All right, let's go store this image. And this time what I'll do is I'll load the, this image here in the background and no, actually I'll load this one. And remember we had the selection mask, which we stored over here, uh, but we have it also stored 
I forget which one it was, this one or this one. Let's see if we if 